Cool. Okay. Hi, everybody. Go for it. Thanks, Chris. Uh, let's just jump through to the uh, next slide, please. Um, yeah, next slide. Next slide. Okay, great. Next slide. This is uh, the schedules have been published. Chris, do you want to say a few words about this or Taylor or anyone else who's on the call? No, they're just uh, both live for Asia and North America, um, uh, also including some co-located events like EnvoyCon that we're putting together for the community. So I uh, just wanted to raise awareness that uh, all these things are out. And more importantly, if you go to the next slide, uh, we have the dates for uh, 2019 locked in for our three <coughs> major uh, events. So um, feel free to pencil those uh, in your calendar. So any questions on that? I have a question. Um, I was involved in the program committee for Copenhagen. Yep. And one of the things that was a uh, lightning rod issue in the selection phase was whether there was a double blind selection process. Um, and it was promised at the time that that would be used next time, meaning later in the year. Was that used for the uh, Shanghai and Seattle conferences? And if not, please can we use it for the next conferences? Alexis, it was um, not promised that we would do it. It was promised that we would discuss it in detail. And uh, the co-chairs, Liz and um, uh, Rice and Janet Kuo, uh, discussed it in detail and decided that they did not want to do a, a double broad line selection process. Um, and um, so I, I would encourage you to uh, email them or me if, if you want to discuss it further or we can have it as on a future call. But um, I, I I think there's a lot of downsides to a double blind uh, process and it's actually extremely rare in uh, the conference world and not something that I personally would support. So uh, a bunch of questions. One, was that decision and the rationale written down anywhere? No. Okay. Um, and I, 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 I am strongly in favor of double blind. Um, it is done um, effectively everywhere now in computer science academia. Um, computer science, uh, academic computer science had some of the same arguments against double blind that you probably make. Um, they have since moved to all double blind and they've seen much better results. So um, there are a lot of arguments in favor of double blind. Um, and it's something that I think we should be considering as a TOC. I really don't think it should be up to each individual conference to decide whether they are double blind or not. Um, if we are going to not be double blind, um, that is a decision that we should make for all of our conferences. If we are gonna be double blind, that's a decision that we should be made for all of our conferences. Okay, everybody, um, let's not make this a debating topic for today. I was very curious about what the process was this time. I too am strongly in favor of double blind, but I don't want it to be a, a discussion point for today. So um, Dan, thanks for explaining that. Uh, we shall follow up on this for another, another occasion, please. Could I just request that, Brian, if, if you could send some links to that process and the justification for it to the public list, I'd be happy to review them. Uh, yep, sure, absolutely. Right. Um, so next slide, please. All right, so this is very important, and I'm sorry that not everybody who's normally on the calls is here today due to flights and stuff. But we had a bit of a huddle after the last uh, TOC call um, because we hadn't had a proper, you know, private face-to-face -face for some time. And, you know, some topics that we discussed in the last one came up again. And there's a strong feeling now in the TOC, now that CNCF has gotten bigger, that we need to change how we work. And it's been a problem for a while, but it's become an urgent problem. And so um, we have the nine of us with votes essentially decided to make a few changes to how the meetings operate and a few other changes as well. So uh, we're going to change how we build the agenda and we're also going to require that minutes be taken. And the way that we're going to do that is very similar to how, for example, a Kubernetes SIG would work or um, an open source project might have a, a weekly face-to-face -face hangout, which is to have a, a living document uh, you can see an example linked to here, TOC public notes. And in that document, uh, you take, um, you, everyone can contribute an agenda if they have right access to the document. 
and the agenda will be shaped a, a day or two before the uh, call by you know the chair and, and, and folks like Chris and Dan and so on and uh, to, to create you know some structure and order and then we'll take notes on the same document during the meeting so that we can then have a system of record for what was agreed and uh, and so on thank you Doug I see you there on the chat um, we will use this in the next meeting okay uh, not today we just didn't have time to get there I would really appreciate it if one or two people who uh, either are TOC contributors or part of the executive staff or TOC voting members could just help out to get this, this way of working up and running. Otherwise, Chris and I will have to do it all ourselves and we will um, go a bit um, crazy or crazier in some cases. Okay, um, does everyone understand that? Everyone understand the goals and purpose of this? It should be relatively familiar, this process, not nothing radical here. Any questions? Awesome. Please can we go to the next slide? Okay, and we also want to change um, how we work. Uh, we have had a lot of meetings where we sit through presentations. And, you know, in addition to that becoming a bit samey, uh, we feel that we're being, that valuable time is being squeezed out from, uh, you know, by that process. And we should spend that time in a more focused manner on some other things, which means, of course, that we need another way of doing the real time presentations. Some of them will be moved to to non-real time. So we're probably going to drop the real time sandbox presentations, but keep the ones for incubation and graduation. And we want to divert the time available during the meeting to focus discussions, uh, AKA working sessions. And we'll have the first one of those today around the topic of end users. So we'll get a chance to do an alpha run of this approach. And then the idea is that the next meeting in two weeks time will be around the topic of helping projects which um, appeared in the community, not for the first time, a few weeks ago, and there was some discussion on the mailing list about it. And Chris has created a document, and I think we can work together towards some, some ideas there together. Um, we also might change the cadence and the length of the meetings. Please bear with us while the TOC members figure out exactly how we wanna spend our time on this. Don't be alarmed, the purpose is to scale better. It's not trying to exclude anyone, we're actually trying to make it more inclusive and more scalable, but it'll take a little bit of time to figure out how to get there. Does anyone have questions about this? Could I, could I make a request or offer a suggestion? Yes. Um, uh, this may have happened already, but I would propose that um, projects, for example, that are coming in for sandbox vote, um, really need to not just like throw a 30 minutes of YouTube up, but actually need to write a document that has some specific format um, and is kept, you know, relatively short enough to, to digest. I think we will get a lot more review if uh, um, the content is, is uh, formatted in a consistent written way. Uh, it's a lot faster to read a good doc than it is to like sit and watch a presentation on live video or stored video for 30 minutes or an hour or where, whatever it ends up being. Thank you, Bob. I could not I think, agree more. I love that. You. I love that idea so much. Please, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, Bob and Camille, uh, could you send me an email or send it to the TOC public list? I don't mind which just with a few bullet points of things you might think should be in such a document. And um, yeah, we're in the process, as Chris is pointing out here on the chat channel, of making some updates to the, some of these processes, especially around Sandbox. So just please, please, please send, send, send suggestions to the public list or, or to me and Chris and whatever, just, just send it, send it, send it, send it. Thank you. Will do. Um, all right. Anything else on this slide that I've missed out? No, I don't think so. Okay, please can we go to the next slide? Um, okay, uh, this is my grand moment to reveal that I'm sitting next to Cheryl. Hi, Cheryl. Hey, Alexis, and everybody else on the call. Um, would you like to introduce yourself or would you like Chris and Dan to introduce you first? Or both at the same time, maybe. <laughs> um, 
Chris, Dan, do you have any preference? Uh, no, no, go for it. I mean, we already published a blog post, but happy for you to take the lead introducing yourself. We're excited to have you here. Uh, I'm excited to be here. So uh, if you haven't read the blog post yet, this is my second day as director of ecosystem. And my mission is to make our end users more successful and productive and help the community ensure that it has some feedback and get feedback between the projects and the end users who are using them. Um, so my background is as a product manager at a container storage startup called StorageOS, who are a CNCF member, and as an engineer at Google, where I was probably the, the best example of an end user myself in that I was a developer who did not understand Borg very well, uh, but was still forced to write code on it. So there we go. Um, yeah, that's me. If you've got any questions, then let me know. Does anyone have any initial questions? We've got a few more slides on this topic and users, by the way. I, I have a quick question. This is Matt Farina. Uh, Hi, Matt. End users can often mean a lot of things to a lot of people. Uh, can you give some clarification on what we mean by end user here? That is... I'm going to think that, Matt, if you, if you don't mind, just because we've uh, had to kind of hone in on the definition over the last couple of years with our end user community and such. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, I don't want to claim that this is perfect, but it, it's worked well enough, which is companies that don't offer cloud native services to their customers. Um, and so Pinterest is a perfect example of a company that's using Kubernetes and other cloud native technologies internally, but they offer the Pinboard platform to their customers as opposed to GitLab or Google or, or lots of other folks who, who offer something. Um, but it, I, I, I don't, um, where it gets a little fuzzier is we've sort of arbitrarily said that telecom firms um, are not end users. And um, then there's been some other ones that have been somewhat close calls. Yeah, that. Do you have anything to add to that, Cheryl? Um, to propose an alternative definition? I've thought a lot about this myself because I come really from a, a developer background. I'm very involved with uh, the meetups and so I speak to a lot of DevOps engineers. And so, so far the definition of vendors who are not selling cloud native services makes sense to me. But I wonder if it's broader, if it's, is it a particular um, type of role within those places? Like, is it more engineering focused or is it, I, I don't know. I've spent a lot of time thinking about what exactly end users mean. And, and you know, when I think of end users, um, by the way, for those of you who don't know, I do SIG apps over on Kubernetes side. So I deal with end users a lot and I work on Helm, which is, so w when we think about it, right, we're trying to hone in sometimes on individual types of people to figure out what do they need and how to set them up to be successful. Um, and so, you know, it could be organizations and that deals with organizations and management interactions, but do the engineers and the people themselves on the ground have what they need? And sometimes that's a different question. And, and it has different needs. And so that's some of why I was asking, because I'm, I'm curious to ferret it out and just see where, where we're at on this. Um, more just because I was curious and wanted to know than had any specific uh, opinion on what we should do. I think my natural, Thanks, my, and Matt, sorry, my personal bias. Please, is, please go ahead, Cheryl. Yeah. Sorry. So my, my personal bias is more for the, the engineering and developer side, but I'm also aware that there's a lot of work at the organizational level. So I think I'll have to work out that balance. And also- uh, And I, I would just add, yeah, oh, sorry, Cheryl, that- um, sorry, one more thing. I mean, the end user, oh, please. Uh, and also whether we're talking about end users who are CNCF members or whether that includes end users who are not CNCF members. It's a good, a good distinction to make. And they're also end users of other foundations like the Cloud Foundry Foundation who are associated with the Linux Foundation, therefore, but aren't necessarily in part of CNCF. So there's all kinds of people. I was just going to add that the two places where the definition has needed to come up the most um, are one on um, our end user community, 
where we do require that they, they not sell cloud native services. And, and the thinking there was to try and, and essentially keep the foxes out of the hen house. And so um, that have to have the end users who were potentially customers of, of vendors to have a place where they could communicate bluntly, but in a vendor free environment. And then the other area, so all of those people are, are CNCF members or supporters by definition, but the other area where it's coming up more and more is um, in submissions to KubeCon Cloud Native Con, where we do ask people to check a box to say that uh, if one of the speakers is an end user. And, and by that, again, we mean uh, not a vendor offering services. But um, it, it, this stuff isn't perfect. So I, and, and I think we're very open to um, modifying the definition, particularly now that we have Sheryl on board. All Sounds right. Good. Please can we go to the next slide? This is a screen a shot that you may have seen before of uh, what was the, the feedback from the TOC in June and early July leading up to the GB offsite. Uh, and this was the slide that I presented summarizing that feedback. Um, Cheryl, do you want to say a few words about you know what your thoughts are on, on this initial feedback from the TOC? Bear in mind this is somewhat random, and I speak as somebody who is very much aware this is a day two for the new role. So you know any comments, and then we can go on to a bit of a discussion session afterwards. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so I think the ones that resonate most with the conversations that I've had are the first three. So understanding why, why end users use the projects in the first place um, beyond the, there's always, a, there's always a reason or purpose beyond because we want to use this technology, but the end users all have different ideas of exactly what they want. And from those, they need guidance and templates on how to prove those things and then how to go how to actually execute and implement them. Um, I think there's a feeling that there's a lot of projects and people don't have the time to investigate how they all work with each other. Um, so that's something that I plan to spend a lot of my early time, early time in the next month or two, uh, talking to end users and understanding what their, what their goals are and what they are missing in those areas. Okay, I'm actually going to ask that we go to the next slide, please. Thank you. So I was hoping that now, now it's uh, 23 minutes past the hour, just for the next five or 10 minutes, um, we could solicit some feedback and maybe have a conversation um, between uh, Cheryl and perhaps others from the CNCF executive team as well, if need be, around what are some structured activities that people in the TOC community, whether you're a voting member or uh, just somebody who dials in one, once a month, uh, would like to hear about from end users or feel or is, is important. Personally, I think one of the most uh, innovative uh, aspects of the CNCF in terms of its governance is that um, Craig designed it with the idea of three uh, useful bodies in mind, which the TOC and GB are just two, and the end user group is a third. And it's been um, somewhat difficult to make the most out of that without full-time people helping to kind of move things along and get information out of folks. So this is a great opportunity, I think. Um, so a question for members of the TOC is how have you been communicating with end users so far, if you have? Has it been informal or is there any uh, expectations for how you would do that? I mean, I, I, I am can... not the end user rep, but I am basically in the role of an end user. But the team that I run, it does not produce uh, vendor software for cloud native. So, you know, I sort of live it in day to day, um, as well as just being kind of heavily involved in the community. Um, so, you know, that's sort of how I personally stay involved with, with end user stuff hey this is a this is just kind of add add to that like the um the two areas that i i think are the most important for the toc to be involved with end users is in 
either the um, the gaps or the some of the the issues that that we're running into in the end user space with implementing cloud native technologies is one area, and then the second area would be um, some of the projects. Like I know here at Mastercard, we're working in like some some unique security areas that there are no solutions in cloud native today, and we want to contribute that back to the community, but we don't want to do it as a um, heavy handed, like you must do it because MasterCard did it way, but more of a, this is like really good for the community to look at. And we want TLC input on, on that. Does that make sense? As a project maintainer, I would love some kind of opportunity at the uh, KubeCon to have a meaningful discussion with some end users. Plus one. So when you say a meaningful discussion, you're talking some kind of forum or a track focused on end users? Uh, yeah, some kind of forum uh, that can involve direct interaction. I'm not thinking of a track so much in the sense of talks. There are good end user talks at the conference or that have been in the past, mm -hmm. uh, but more of an opportunity for project maintainers and end users to uh, discuss the, um, you know, how end users are using the CNCF projects and where the friction and gaps are, especially in using them together, but also uh, just independently. So, so this is this is Matt Farina again. I'll just pipe up. You know, I know some projects are proactive in finding who their their big users are and going out and sitting down with them and interviewing them and having conversations. Um, you know, some of the projects will actually do that. But I, I bet you a lot of maintainers on a lot of projects are engineers and aren't those folks who organize and get around and sit down and get good actionable feedback from their end users. Uh, and so, for the, all those who don't organize, and it might be nice to have some way to have that helpful for us, I think is the way to put it. What sort of formats do you think that should come in? Because as coming from a product management background, I've spent a lot of time thinking about how to take lots of unstructured feedback, especially as we're not working with three end users, there's already 50 or 60 companies and putting that in a structured uh, way so that we can communicate and we've got the same idea about what everybody needs. Do you have any thoughts on what format you would like to see that in? You know, uh, I've got a thought again. Uh, is this uh, something we could actually go back to the end user leaders on and ask them what format they'd be up for presenting? Uh, because I think we've got a bunch of folks here who work for vendors and things like that, and maybe letting the end users to a certain extent extent drive the conversation uh, might be helpful because then we vendors aren't trying to push it into a way that fits into what we're already looking for. Uh, it's, it's definitely going to be, we're going to iterate on this for sure. Um, I think both sides need to understand or have input on the best best way to communicate user needs. So if you have, I would definitely go and talk to more of the end user leads as well, but if you have any thoughts now, I'd really appreciate. I mean, I will say that I wish KubeCon had a lot more end user talks. I am, I, you know, I am basically telling people, so I'm sending a lot of people to KubeCon and I think the people that I, that I'm sending that work directly on Kubernetes, it will be somewhat useful because they need to know, you know, a lot of what's in the ecosystem. But if I were, you know, it, when I have people that are like, I want to learn more in general about, you know, cloud native architecture, I want to learn more in general about, you know, when people actually use these things, the experiences they have, I think we are way short on uh, covering that. And that is, you know, like the real experiences of people really using these products in anger, in prod and having problems is the most interesting thing that end users can provide. Uh, and we're just not, I don't, I just don't feel like we, we get a lot out of, you know, I don't feel, I don't feel like we're highlighting that, uh, that enough in the conference, in the conferences right now, at least. Yeah, I agree. Can I add to that as an elaboration that 
not only in the conferences, but also in these TOC meetings, it'd be nice now and then to get a kind of roundup, not you know necessarily a long spiel, but 10 minutes just to give us an update on new things the end users are talking about right now. Yeah, I've definitely heard. Yeah, I, I would also add that when you are looking at users at KubeCon, you have to, you're getting a certain kind of user that may not be representative of the broader user um, that may have different issues. Um, I would liken it to talking to customers in your own customer briefing center. Um, whenever you, if, if you work at a big company, you've got a customer briefing center. Whenever you're, oh, if you only talk to customers in your own customer briefing center, you are getting the customers that are invested enough in you to travel out and everything else. You actually want to get those customers who are, in this case, users who are not invested enough to make that trip because they've got, they see some really serious barriers that haven't been addressed. Um, and I would encourage us to play, to, to play some more away games and to go to DevOps conferences, to go to programming language conferences, where people who are actually trying to get shit done actually collect and ha have some Kubernetes, um, have some, some boffs, have some, some meetups, whatever you want to do at those conferences. And you will get a whole different, I think, um, and valuable perspective on where the project could go to address concerns that might not be being addressed right now. Whatever the opposite of preaching to the choir is. Hmm. Right. I, I'm Koske and I, I run another open source project, Jenkins, and, I, and I, I do two things that I wanted to share. The one is uh, when I go out and travel, I try to just go visit some random companies and then I can ask them how they are doing the software development. And they, they surprisingly open up to a lot of things. Um, and then I capture that and bring back to the, I guess, the project. The other thing we do is uh, we ask people to come to this you know, that day in which like, a lot of people from our side show up and then they share whatever the, you know, the challenges. And you, you, you can usually have like a dozen or so different folks coming. I find that these private setup really help them open up a little more. So in combination with those things, like, I find that they, you know, they're incredibly valuable. And they, uh, to your point, they really do capture different kinds of audience. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Totally agree with that. Um, I think the end user community, well, there's the monthly calls, but that's about it. I don't know that there's um, much activity between those calls that happens. Perhaps if there's any anything that I'm not aware of there, then feel free to enlighten me. Um, but improving the, the communication channels so we're not talking to the same people over and over again or only people in a certain geography or in certain verticals because those are the people we already know. I think that will help. The other thing that I see from running, I run the Cloud Native London meetup. So I speak to a lot of developers and engineers and DevOps people in this space is there's a lot of projects and there's a lot of confusion about how, why, what, what's the value of having lots of different projects? Um, if the CNCF ends up with a thousand projects, then does that help them? Uh, I don't know the answer to that, but. What do you use the problems to solve? What's the big picture? Yeah, so there's a, there's something that I've thought about, which is, playing more of a product management role across projects. Obviously each project has its own product management uh, team and requirements and so on. Um, but as end users, you want to have feedback across multiple projects and that's a role that I can have some input into. That'd be great. I think so anyway. Um, would you be able, Cheryl, to um, attend these TOC calls um, regularly? Do you think that's something you plan to do? Yeah, definitely. Great. Definitely. Would, it be, would it be possible to um, actively contribute to the agenda from time to time and just say, give a sort of short update or, I mean, I don't know what the topics are going to be, but it'd be great to hear from you yeah, definitely. regularly. Uh, I think every once in a while hearing what end users are talking about and what the trends are that they're seeing and what they're excited by. Um, will be a good 
actually another thing that we could do is so I was lucky enough to be invited to an end musical not too long ago and I saw a really good presentation from I think it was the University of Michigan that, that Chris had organized for that call and you know it'd be nice to, to show that one again to people on the TOC meet I mean I'm not saying we should do that every time but now and then that would be an example of something we could do yeah definitely if it's um, a particularly interesting use case or something yeah I think end users often think their stories are not worth talking about or not interesting enough to talk about so it's something that I care about a lot is making those stories heard excellent does anyone else have any other questions thoughts suggestions for this topic area for today I've noticed that Cheryl's taken very copious notes <laughs> mostly for myself but I've been I've been writing down all the things that I've been hearing and thank you all for your comments does everyone have your contact details so we can spam you with further suggestions I think Chris put it on the chat okay um, my okay. email address should be see hung there it is yeah board. it's in there good 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 yeah while well, my inbox is empty take advantage of it right excellent Thanks, DC. Uh, right, next slide, please. Okay, so the idea is to do another session a little bit like this, maybe a bit longer actually next time, um, covering um, helping projects as a theme. And I'm not saying we'll only do this on the call, but I want to touch on another theme together. So this is a topic that's come and gone uh, with lots of different people with different points of view. I'd like to make it very clear that uh, Chris and other members of the CNCF staff do a lot of kind of below the waterline work that we don't always see. Um, personally, I'd really like to hear more about what, what that is actually. Um, but a, as a big picture item, I do know that it's a recurring question from people. How can we help projects more? And uh, I hope that we can go through it in detail in the next, in the next session. Um, Chris, do you have a a document that we can add further suggestions to. Um, I know you started compiling some thoughts from the mailing list discussion that I've heard. Yeah, one second. I thought I linked to it, but here is it in the chat. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Taylor, would you mind adding that link to the document, please, the, the slides, so people can see it? Okay, let's just jump to the next uh, slide, please. Thank you. So Chris, um, you're the person who's been doing a lot of this. Could you talk us through a little bit about what you've done personally and also with other members of the team, how many, how many interactions there have been and generally give everybody a sense of what, what's, the, what's the state of the art um, in terms of working with projects so we can, we can move on from there? Yeah, sure. Um, you know, basically the way it works is when a project gets onboarded to uh, become an official uh, CNC of project, whatever level um, they are, they're basically asked if they want uh, regular meetings um, with staff. Essentially, do a monthly, um, you know, fifteen or thirty minute meeting depending on their needs. Um, uh, I would say, a little over of half of projects uh, essentially opt uh, for the meeting. Um, the others uh, generally say they're fine and we'll reach out if we need anything. Um, recently shared a calendar uh, with the TOC in terms of those meetings if you wanted to actually join one of those. Um, we're structuring and doing, um, uh, well, so we have a service desk for anything that um, projects uh, require ask from funding outreach interns to uh, documentation help, uh, migrating a website from, you know, uh, you know, whatever, WordPress to Hugo or whatever. So. Um, we've probably accomplished about um, 100 or so tickets through that over the last uh, year. In, uh, we recently did a survey in the first half of the year, um, which I linked to over here, which kind of discussed uh, thoughts from maintainers in terms of how the staff was doing and certain asks. Uh, so we published those results there. We're about to kick off a survey later this week for kind of the second half um, of the year so we could have results ready for uh, kind of KubeCon uh, time frame. Um, other than that, I think that's basically it. So, you know, regular meetings, check checkpoints, service desk, um, regular surveys. Cool. So I have two, two comments on that. First of all, first of all, actually, thank you very much. And just to remind people that 
you know, this is a topic where a lot of um, effort goes in from different sources. We don't always see it. So I think it's really important if we're going to discuss it in detail that people start from appreciation of what's already being done. Um, my two comments, which are shown here, are number one, I think the service desk is okay. Um, clearly working um, if, if you're getting 100 requests through it. But it's, it does still strike me as a little bit on the passive side. It'd be good to um, come up with specific proposals and solicit feedback from the projects and maybe other communities and users, the TOC, et cetera, around that. And, and also with the survey, you know, I think the survey was pretty good, but it did feel a little bit like a glass half full or at least maybe two thirds full, one third not so full. Um, you know, you can interpret the results of the survey in different ways. And I think it's really important with these surveys to ask very directed questions. And my the number one question that bothers me is, if you spoke to a project lead from a CNCF project, would they recommend other projects join the CNCF? And if so, why? Um, or would they kind of shrug their shoulders and say, well, it's been okay, it's a neutral home. Blah, blah, blah. We, we did add that question, Alexis, by the way, for the next survey going out. Right. Yeah, and if we can get the, the, the high profile and well-known figures associated with the best projects being the loudest and clearest and best exponents for the projects, then I think that will help a lot with um, all kinds of other things um, and user happiness, etc. That's just my view. Does anyone else want to chip in? This is not a major topic for today. We'll discuss it next time. Any other things that you think should be aware of in preparation for that? Yeah, strongly agree, Alexis. That should be our guiding metric is how we're doing by our projects. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Anyone else? Right, next slide then. Uh, we haven't quite got over the line on this, but we did also discuss offline some um, some ongoing concerns about the sandbox marketing. Um, I think a lot of this is just kind of a side effect of the CNCF having become a more successful and bigger organization than anybody truly anticipated when it got started a couple of years ago. So we have to be uh, as best as possible, as gracious as possible in dealing with this. But we really do want to make a clear distinction between incubated and graduated projects, which we see as getting over quite a high bar and deserving of a, a large amount of attention, um, even if they're not the only project in a particular area. Um, and sandbox projects, some of which were thought of yesterday and are very, very new and um, may not succeed. So we're just trying to adjust some of the process and marketing in order to align with that. Um, and then we also want to understand better how to you know, get the, the CNCF to scale because the TOC is become, becoming more and more of a bottleneck. And we've really got to empower uh, the community more, more intelligently than we have done um, without necessarily creating, you know, alternate political universes. Um, this is going to take a bit of time to figure out. But as an example, you know, I was asked to look at a, a project yesterday that does something in security. And it'd be really good to send that along to the working group for security and ask them to come back with a readout on it. Um, but we're not quite at the point being able to do that systematically yet. Okay. Uh, so that'll be a topic for the future. Uh, next slide, please. I think we're into the end of the session now. Uh, we're not going to do the Key Cloak presentation today. I apologize for that, uh, especially to the Key Cloak team. I saw you did some really nice slides. For people who want to look at the slides, they are in the deck, and we will revert to these projects very, very soon in a slightly revised form uh, in terms of the presentations, etc. Can we go on, please, to the next slide? Uh, not going to do working group updates today. Uh, cover that. We're going to come back to that backlog, move on. And then just a reminder on the conferences, I think. And then uh, the last slide is the, uh, the new agenda style for next time. I hope everyone understands what's being requested here. Um, does anyone else want to have anything to add in terms of wrapping up for today and preparing for the next presentation in two, in two weeks' time? The next meeting, I mean. Okay, I guess silence is assent, which is one of the joys of this organization. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, everyone. And um, we'll wrap for today, um, unless anyone wants to dive into something else. Thanks, Alexis. Thanks, Alexis. Thank, Thank you, Alexis. Bye. Thank you.
Thank you.